Wait. This comes from an actual former barista, like a former employee of Starbucks, allegedly. Gotta keep that in. If you combine these ingredients in these exact measurements, you will be able to reach the consistency of the vanilla sweet cream cold foam from Starbucks. We're gonna get into it, but I think the secret here comes to the way you make it. We're gonna start with three tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. We're gonna be very precise here. This would be one. And I'm assuming this will make about one portion of it, two and three. To this, we're gonna add two tablespoons of 2% milk. Don't try to switch the ingredients or the measurements, it's not gonna work. So we have to follow this exactly the way it is. One, two tablespoons of the 2% milk. And to this, we're gonna be adding some of this Torani vanilla syrup. I think this is the vanilla syrup they use at Starbucks, or maybe it was at some point. I don't know. We're adding a full tablespoon of the vanilla syrup. And I guess technically you should be able to do a different flavor, but we're doing the vanilla one. And that is basically all the ingredients that you will need. So this is the important part because according to this ex-employee of Starbucks, we're trying to recreate what Starbucks does in these professional blenders using utensils from your house. So the first thing is you need to make sure that this is combined. And this might seem like a stupid step, but this is, there's no skipping steps in copycat recipe. So the employee who leaked this recipe also said that using one of these Amazon like milk frothers technically should be able to accomplish exactly the same thing as they do at Starbucks. It might just take some practice. They specifically mentioned that if you overdo it, it becomes whipped cream. And if you do it right, it will be exactly the same as the Starbucks blender. Let's try not to overdo it. Oh my god, I feel like I'm already making whipped cream. You basically only need to add air to the mixture. I think we're there already, which is really, really quick if you want to do this in the morning. It's got that weird, like, airy consistency, but the final test will be pouring this over some Starbucks coffee. So I am going to... This is actual Starbucks coffee. Okay, if this is correct, this will look the same as this. Wait, I mean, it is sitting on top pretty damn similar. I feel like I could have even whipped it just a tiny little bit longer. So close, tiny little bit more whipping, but look at the way it sits on top. I made this in literal seconds and Starbucks charges like $10 for this. You literally would not be able to tell the difference. Look how it's still sitting on top. I was kind of scared of it going whipped cream, so this time around I'm gonna whip it just a tiny little bit longer. This is kind of scary, but we gotta be strong. You basically wanna add air into the mixture without whipping it, so as much air as you can. It's kind of difficult to predict whether it's whipping or not. Let's hope that this time around, oh wait, it's sitting on top way more. Now, that is actually perfect. Do you see how, do you see how it's sitting on top like completely? I feel like this is actually what we were trying to accomplish. I just needed maybe 20 more seconds of whipping, but that is basically how you make it. Look at this. It literally looks the same as the one from Starbucks. To be honest, this is easier than frothing just milk. It actually is quicker. Now that is exactly the same. Like the texture now, it's 10 out of 10. It's 11 out of 10. This is my opinion. That is how you make it. But you will try it because it's three ingredients and you will come back to this video and you will let people know that we're not lying around here. And look at the way it's sitting there. So I just finished filming the whole video. I think it's been like maybe eight hours and I let this sit just here at room temperature because I wanted to see what happens to the foam and surprisingly, it stays on it. Like keep in mind, this has been a good eight, maybe more hours while I was filming. It's pretty similar to the Starbucks one. This is about to be one of the most interesting copycat recipes that we've ever followed because this is pretty serious. This is supposed to be the recipe for the Chick-fil-A signature sauce. This person is allegedly an ex-employee from Chick-fil-A and they worked there when they were 15 when the employees accidentally invented the Chick-fil-A sauce. This was the 
the original recipe according to this person. It was apparently invented in Fredericksburg, that's a place in America I'm assuming. And with these three ingredients you're supposed to recreate the actual sauce that eventually became one of the most popular sauces in the whole of fast food industry. First of all, this is the original Chick-fil-A sauce. In my opinion, this is the most popular fast food sauce of all time. So will we be able to make this with three ingredients? Maybe. So the first ingredient is supposed to be half a cup of coleslaw dressing. Kind of smells right immediately. So, so that would be pretty good. So that would be half a cup of coleslaw dressing. To this, we're gonna add one quarter of a cup of barbecue sauce. I can kind of see how this is going to become the original sauce because it's kind of starts to smell like the Chick-fil-A sauce in my kitchen already. To this, we're gonna add the barbecue sauce. And the last ingredient is some specifically yellow mustard. So this would be one and a half tablespoons of yellow mustard. Oh, that would be one tablespoon and this would be half a tablespoon. We're gonna combine this and see what color this is going to be. Oh, no, wait. That is pretty damn similar. The only difference is that this one has these little dots. Maybe this has to be blended. I can't really blend the spices from the coleslaw dressing, so they're just a little bit thicker than the ones from the real sauce. But other than that, once we combine this, look at the color. It's it's almost exactly the same. The texture is exactly the same. It literally comes down to those little spice chunks from the coleslaw dressing. It's pretty similar. Like it's almost freaking me out that this is possible with these ingredients. People probably have these ingredients at home to make this sauce. I don't know how to best do this. I feel like this is gonna take a while. <laughs> I can barely tell the difference between these two sauces. The colors of these sauces are so similar that I honestly, I can barely tell the difference. Like this is, this would be very, very easy to forget. No, this is the Chick-fil-A, this is mine. That's how similar they look that I'm actually confused. So the original one also has a little bit of chunks in it. This is the original Chick-fil-A sauce. And as you can see, it's just a little bit more blended. I don't know if it's like a professional blender that blends it. Mine is a very similar color and texture, except mine has these spice chunks in it that I honestly, I could not blend this. But the flavor is what's truly important here. First of all, this is the actual Chick-fil-A sauce. This is really important to see how it sticks to the chicken nugget. It is an incredible sauce. Now that I know what's in it, I can literally taste the dressing, the barbecue sauce. Once you know, you know. This is the copycat sauce. It sticks to the chicken nugget basically the same. I would never, I would never, ever know. And it's three ingredients. <laughs> I honestly don't even know what to say. Like what? The original? How creaminess, sweetness, every flavor aspect of this is on this hide. I don't know what kind of witchcraft this is, but I'm playing with some dark magic here. I'm almost scared of this one because I think this is one of the most popular food items of all time. So this is a recipe for the cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster, leaked by an ex-employee, allegedly, with a few different changes, but we're gonna get there in a second because the ingredients are supposed to be really cold for this to work, so we gotta move quickly. The first ingredient that we're gonna use is two and a half cups of Bisquick mix, which is an ingredient that is very popular in America. It's kind of like flour with baking rising agents to it. I'm not entirely sure. To this, we're gonna add butter, and this is really important for this to be exactly the same. The way they make a red lobster, you need to use cold butter, and then using, you can use a fork, you can use a metal masher, we're going to combine the butter into the Bisquick. Oh my god, I've never used one of these before. This is fascinating. I should have 
probably use something different. The butter and the flour are supposed to become like like a pea-sized mixture. I don't even understand what it means. I think it's supposed to be like breadcrumbs kind of consistency. Maybe you don't use a potato masher for this. Just use a fork and I feel like it'll be a lot easier. We're gonna combine the butter and the bisquick until the butter is broken down into pea-sized pieces. This is not my rules. I don't want this to go warm because I know it will not work. It's kind of like... I can't even explain what this consistency is like. To this mixture, we're gonna add some cold whole milk. And it's really important that this is cold. So according to the Red Lobster employees, they actually use water at the restaurant, cold water for this step. But then they have other additives, like, I don't know, maybe milk powder, they kind of add the milk flavor. So in order to recreate the same flavor from the restaurant, you need to use whole milk instead of water. To this, we're gonna add cheddar cheese. And this is like, think a cup of cheese and we're going to basically combine the whole mixture. I can kind of see this working honestly. I almost forgot a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Just a tiny little bit more. The mixture kind of looks exactly what I would expect this to look like. Like the red lobster biscuits are very dry, flaky and that's kind of what the mixture is giving. It kind of smells it smells like a Red Lobster waiting area when you're waiting for your takeout. This seems legit. This was really quick and it kind of feels like restaurant quality dough. Like this is something that you'd buy pre-made and then just add water. So I'm gonna make sure we get every bit out. So I looked at the instructions and according to the Red Lobster employees, you're actually supposed to use one quarter one quarter of a cup of dough per biscuit. That is the official amount from Red Lobster. I think my ice cream scoop is exactly one quarter of a cup or very, very close to it. So I'm gonna be using just an ice cream scoop because I just, I think this will make it easier to give it the shape. Let's see. That's, that's going to be perfect, I just know. I don't know how, exactly how many this makes. Not enough for my appetite for Red Lobster Biscuits. I think they do grow a little bit, so I'm kind of... Maybe only four at once, actually. And this is kind of what our copycat lobsters look like, which... It kind of looks like you made it from like a pre-made Red Lobster mix. It's suspiciously perfect? Like, why does it look like I didn't even make it myself? Yet? Don't question the method, but you're supposed to cook this for 13 minutes exactly. At 30 minutes, you wanna get them out of the oven. So 13 minutes at 400 Fahrenheit. The reason why we gotta move quick is because while the biscuits are baking, we're actually gonna make this signature butter sauce that is very much what makes it taste like red lobster and not just some random biscuits. We're gonna start with some melted butter and it's really important that it's already melted. And to this, we're gonna add garlic, salt, and parsley. And you're just going to mix this. And it might not seem like a lot, but this is the exact amount that's supposed to cover all the biscuits, the whole batch. It's kind of like parsley, garlic, buttery. As soon as the biscuits hit 13 minutes, we're gonna get them out. We're gonna brush them really quickly with this butter sauce. And we're gonna put them back in for another three minutes. You gotta follow these guidelines. You gotta follow these terms and conditions because it's going to give you that nice, crispy, buttery outside of the biscuits from Red Lobster. Hey, Siri, stop. Oh my God. These literally look perfect as it is. Let me see if I can show you. They literally look perfect. This one here looks exactly like a red lobster biscuit. Ouch, this is very hot. So we are going to butter them really well. Even though they're kind of getting crispy already, like we'd be fine with them as it is. I want to follow the instructions. So my butter is kind of solidifying a little bit. But it'll be fine. Do you see how they're kind of dry? And then as soon as we add the sauce, they look exactly like the red lobster ones. It's, it's really the secret ingredient here is this sauce. So we're gonna put this back in for another three minutes. In my case, I'm thinking more towards two minutes. So I'm gonna show you the result in just a second. Okay. I am honestly scared that the FBI is gonna just burst through my door. <laughs> This is exactly the same 
as the Red Lobster biscuit. It looks like what their biscuits look like in TV commercials. So this is kind of what they look like on the tray, and this one specifically, I hope they don't deflate or anything weird, because this looks exactly the same as a Red Lobster biscuit. I mean, there is... Look at the bottom! The toastiness, the garlic on the outside, the parsley, the little toasty cheddar bits, this is exactly the same. Every single one of them just came out looking exactly the same. Isn't this literally a red lobster biscuit? Another video in which I'm gonna have to pay my lawyer to review before posting. I have no words. I don't even know what to say. I was expecting similar. I wasn't expecting red lobster in my house and that's what I got. I literally have no words. I've never made biscuits before. That's how you know this recipe is idiot proof. I am the idiot and I proved it. Oh my God, this is literally perfect. Oh, the cheese is still all melty. This is like my new obsession, break into biscuits. I love when it's steamy. So I'm gonna get some butter and we are going to try the biscuit. There's no way. There is. I don't even know what to say because people are not gonna believe me until you try this. If you guys actually try this, please honestly slide in my DMs. I will literally, I will pay for you to give me a review of this because I need someone to actually experience how insane this is. Do you hear the crunchy on the outside of the biscuit? It's literally like restaurant quality. This is not something that you can just randomly make in your kitchen. I guess I'm ready for the Shakira meet and greet. We're about to test out a leaked recipe for one of my obsessions, current obsessions in restaurant food items, which is the broccoli cheddar soup from Panera Bread. This soup is so good. It is so thick and cheesy that in my opinion, it should be considered a cheese sauce and not a soup. It's honestly one of my favorite foods of all time. We're gonna start by adding some melted butter. I think this is half of one onion just chopped up. And this is supposed to cook until the onion is like translucent. It's looking nice and like, not toasty yet, but we're gonna get there. Okay, I'm gonna switch it off, I think. These things, it's like, it creeps on you. It's getting real toasty now. So we're gonna get all of this out of here. So we're gonna start by adding some melted butter which should not be this hot, but it'll be fine. I'm kind of adjusting to my new kitchen gadget here. And to this, I'm gonna add some flour. But why is this so hot? So I'm gonna combine the flour and the butter. And this is basically like making a, a roux, like a base for the soup. There are some lumps here though. It's kind of creamy now. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera. You're just gonna have to believe me. I'm gonna start by adding some milk. I guess a little at a time. The whole point of this part, I think, is to make the soup as thick as it is at Panera Bread, but also this soup is not lumpy. It's supposed to be velvety smooth. Now that this is kind of smooth, I'm gonna add some half and half. So this is half milk cream. I'm still getting adjusted to the ingredients here. I don't think there's a single lump inside and I hope you can see it on the on my phone here, very professional, you're welcome. To the milk, I'm gonna add my spices, which is black pepper, white pepper, mustard, salt, ground red pepper. So I'm gonna add all that in, and the amount of salt that you use will depend on how much salt there's in your chicken stock. And to this, I'm gonna add the chicken stock. We're supposed to increase the temperature and just let this simmer for like 20 minutes. This has been simmering for maybe like 15 to 20 minutes now. And it's kind of thickening up, but not too much. For the next step, we're supposed to add some chopped up broccoli, specifically just the broccoli florets. Florets? Is that how you say it? I thought that was a town in Italy. This would be half a cup of broccoli. 
Some of them are better chopped than others, but I think it will, and this is one and a half cups of broccoli. The other ingredient that really surprised me is carrots. I didn't realize there was carrots in this soup. We're only doing one cup of shredded carrots and they have to be shredded. So that's about half a cup. And this is the cooked onions from earlier. So I guess this will give more flavor. And we're adding some white vinegar. And immediately, keep in mind we haven't added the cheese yet. It's just the color is not there, but in terms of texture, it's giving Panera Bread cheddar soup. So you're supposed to cover this and leave it at a very low heat for 20 minutes. So it's been 40 minutes of cooking time total. I was mixing it every five minutes so it doesn't burn. And I'm not too impressed with the consistency unless something changed in these last minutes. I mean, it looks good. It's still a little bit liquidy. This soup takes Two and a half cups of cheese. Yes, two and a half cups of cheese is like a whole lot of cheese. So by adding the cheese, this is the final step. Oh my God. Oh my God, this is so much cheese. It's literally more cheese than soup. Oh my God, this is gonna be so satisfying mixing this. Oh my God, the texture. It's... This is exactly the same texture. This is the Panera Bread soup. My voice is getting real high because this is life changing for me. This is my favorite soup in the whole world. So I think this needs to stop cooking now. In order to compare this and for this to be fair, I put the Panera Bread, the original soup, in the microwave for literally 10 seconds. And this is the original Panera Bread soup. And right here we've got the soup that we made, which is literally the same color the same texture, the same smell. Look at the way it just... It's the same soup. I literally can't even figure out which soup is which. That's how similar they look. No, because this is actually kind of scary. Let me try the original, my favorite soup of all time. Literally. The perfect soup. My vegetables are a little bit chunkier, but that's literally the only difference. That is literally... You know that meme from The Office? This is the same picture? This is the same picture. Mine is a little bit thicker, and I'm not sure if it's because we've just made it. I mean... The texture of the broccoli, the vegetables in it, who knew there was carrots in it? But I'm 100% convinced that this is the right recipe. We're about to, we're about to have some fine dining. The most important test for me is to know whether the soup is thick enough to hold on the Panera Bread bread. This is actually from Panera Bread. Okay, I think we're reaching the very top. It's very thick now because it's kind of cooled down a little bit. And as it cools down, it's obviously going to be a lot thicker because of the cheese. The bread is not falling apart. It's not soggy. This is incredible. So this is something slightly different. This is very much a copycat recipe of a popular touristic food item. So when I was in Paris, one of the videos that I went specifically to France to film was trying this hot chocolate. It is very chocolatey. It is served with a side of whipped cream and you're supposed to enjoy it with a view of the Eiffel Tower. Except when I arrived to maybe four or five different cafes that do this specific hot chocolate, they were like, Sorry, we're busy. Sorry, we're booked until 2025. I never actually got to try the Parisian hot chocolate until I came across a recipe from someone who's worked specifically in the most popular hot chocolate cafe in Paris. This is straight from the source. We're gonna start with the whipped cream because the hot chocolate has to be served hot, so that's gonna come after. We're basically making a French Chantilly cream. I think that's what it's called. We're gonna start with some whipping cream. To this, we're gonna add two tablespoons of powdered sugar. So the reason why we're using powdered sugar, it's because we want this to be super smooth and creamy. Two tablespoons of icing sugar, powdered sugar, whatever you call it, and one teaspoon of vanilla. So one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm using actual vanilla beans. I don't know if you can see it, but we're gonna whisk this. 
You want to whisk this until it forms soft peaks, but you don't want to overdo it because this is supposed to be really creamy. Okay, now it's literally perfect. There is no better texture for whipped cream. So, so this is what our whipped cream looks like. I almost dropped it. It's very creamy. It's kind of like, well, it's just enough sugar and vanilla to give it a little something. Mine looks grayish because of the vanilla bean powder, but if you use vanilla extract, it will look white. We're gonna put this in the fridge while we work on the hot chocolate. Why is everything covered in cream splashes? For the hot chocolate, we're gonna start with some whole milk and to this I'm gonna add some heavy cream. And I know what you're thinking, you wanna use oat milk, and you wanna use almond milk. This is something you have when you're on, on your holiday in Paris, like this is, you wanna go for whole milk and heavy cream. You can do this in a saucepan as well, but I'm gonna put this in the microwave until this gets hot, but not boiling hot. So we're supposed to add, I think, eight ounces of dark chocolate. It doesn't have to be like the most expensive chocolate. I'm sure it'll taste better. But in reality, all that matters is that the chocolate is over 70%. This is really important because otherwise this is not gonna be authentic. It needs to be... That's the chocolate police. Eight ounces of chocolate. I know that seems intense. So here we've got our very hot milk and cream. So while this is still very, very hot, as you can see, we are going to add all the chocolate in it. This is still very, very hot. It should melt pretty easy. To this, I'm gonna add one, two teaspoons of icing sugar. And this is a secret ingredient that's really going to give it French cafe level. This is half a teaspoon of espresso powder. So we're gonna add the espresso in. So now we're going to blend this and I would love to show it to you guys, but this is, it's too hot. Some bits are definitely a little bit stubborn to melt. This is looking like the best hot chocolate ever already. One more ounce of chocolate in this and I'm pretty sure we would be hitting lethal dose levels of chocolate. I have never seen chocolate this smooth. It's almost like a ganache, like a slightly more liquid ganache. So this is the final. This is the most velvety, beautiful hot chocolate I have ever seen. And we made it in the microwave. Do you see that it's so thick that it coats the back of the spoon? <laughs> that is kind of unreal. I hope the camera is doing justice to how rich this hot chocolate is. I definitely need to be a little bit more gentle with the chocolate. Kind of stains everything. Visually, it looks exactly like the ones I see all over TikTok. Look at the way it moves. That is pretty incredible. Our whipped cream is holding shape still pretty well, so I am going to serve this exactly the way that I would have wanted to experience in Paris. I need to show you the consistency of this cream. It's not the best thing ever. And I'm gonna put it on top of my hot chocolate while it's still warm. I've been dreaming of this, guys, my whole life. How is this something that I made in my own house with my own hands? Look how incredible this looks. I mean, you can be more gentle how you do this. I mean, we're definitely going a little bit crazy with the cream here. Wow, it's just like being in Paris. I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna picture the Eiffel Tower when he does that weird sparkly thing that only happens every three hours. It's doing it. I love it. Wait, all I got was cream. <laughs> You need to try this. I have never, ever experienced anything like this. You don't know hot chocolate until you follow these exact steps. It's smooth, it's rich, it's not sweet, it's just chocolatey. Whipped cream on top is, I'm gonna say it, it's better than a Starbucks cold foam. It makes me mad to know that people are somewhere in Paris experiencing this. If you think that I'm lying, you have to try this. There's no other way. I don't have the vocabulary and the words to convince you that everything that we've tried actually was amazing. Probably wouldn't believe myself either. I've lost count on how many copycat videos 
I've filmed. I don't film that many because I honestly want it to be incredible every single time. Unless I've got the best recipes from the best sources, I'm not filming one of these. If you want me to still carry on and make another episode, you know what to do. I love to do the research for these videos, so I will happily do it, but you have to let me know if you want to watch it. Don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on before you go. But most importantly, don't forget to go and make a grocery list and try the things in this video. What would I recommend the most? The cold foam, it was exactly the same as the Starbucks one. This hot chocolate is one of the greatest things we've ever made in the history of my channel. I'm no exaggerating. All you need is a microwave. Can't believe my videos are free. I should really start charging. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.